tremendous amounts of, of solar uptake from one of these aircraft were putting above my home. I had no choice but to investigate and I was astounded what I found. Didn't like what I found, started to test my rainwater, found there was an incredible amount of toxic metals in that water. Those metals matched geoengineering patents and those amounts have escalated over the course of five years in the case of aluminum as much as 50,000% in a single rain event. We're talking about highly toxic rain. How, how many people, there's no question they're spraying. So when people try to debate this issue, uh, you can't really debate it. I mean, we have, we have a lot more film footage than what we're showing here. Stratospheric wells box ceiling for reduction of global warming. We have 150 patents. Why would they make patents if there wasn't something going on? Why would patents go all the way back to 19, the late 40s? We have a long list of patents, again, about 150, and the exact ingredients we see in these patents, this one was assigned to Hughes Aircraft in 1991, oxides of metal. Why do they use metal? Why do they use aluminum? Because aluminum reflects, and that's, that's the stated purpose of these programs, solar radiation management, to reflect the sun. The rub is, they're destroying Earth's natural protection by doing this. How much sense does that make? So uh, again, we have patents assigned to DOD, Department of Defense, Hughes Aircraft, listing the exact materials that are raining down on us in absolutely lethal amounts. It's not coming from China. We have from CARB, California Air Resources Board, studies on the, metals, uh, the aerosols coming from China. Aluminum is not amongst those metals because aluminum can't float across oceans. Mercury can because mercury can work through a gaseous state, but not aluminum. So we have enough aluminum coming down on us now to change force for pHs. That takes a lot of metal. Updated, uh, this is engineer drought catastrophe, target California. Now, in the case of California, one, we have a shredded ozone layer, northern and southern hemispheres now. The power structure is trying desperately to hide that from us. We can see our trees around town here. They're burnt to a crisp. So, and we have a recent disclosure I'll talk about in a minute from NASA. But we also have a very straightforward equation. We know from available science that when you aerosolize the atmosphere, it diminishes and disperses rainfall. This is not about cloud seeding to create rain. Again, it's about creating artificial, toxic cloud cover. So, we have satellite imagery, which I'll show in a moment, and, and this is what blocks our storm track. This is what's keeping the rain from falling in California. If you see off the U.S. west coast, look closely near the bottom center, you can see the aircraft trailing. I don't know how visible it is to all of you, but that entire marine layer is aerosols. And all that blows in on us. And what happens when they aerosolize in the atmosphere? Again, it shreds ozone, and it diminishes and disperses rain. It reduces evaporation. This is a... aerosol clouds over the Pacific. That's one of their goals, to block the sun over the oceans to keep the thermal build up, the heat from building up in the oceans. But again, the paradox is what they're doing is actually making the overall situation See that crap they're spraying on us? See that crap they're spraying on us? Yeah, it's geoengineering is what they call it. Sky should be blue, not silvery white. And the bottom line is even when you don't see the horizon to horizon trails, we are absolutely still being sprayed. When you see even the shorter, bright trails, still aerosol disbursement. I challenge anybody, look at the high bypass turbofan jet engine, which is all tankers and all commercial carriers. 80% of the air that passes through that engine is non-combusted. That engine by design is almost incapable of making any type of trail. So when you see the silvery white skies still being sprayed, the horizon to horizon trails are the tip of the iceberg for these programs. Alzheimer's and autism, the common link, aluminum exposure. There's a mountain of aluminum coming down on us. It's accumulating in all of this. We have statements from internationally recognized neuroscientists like Dr. Russell Blaylock stating that these particulates enter right through our lung lining, right into our bloodstream, where they build up in our system like a plaque. Tomorrow we have a, one of the top neurologists in Northern California speaking about this issue. He's being inundated with patients that are now becoming cognitively dysfunctional, Alzheimer's and autism, or excuse me, Alzheimer's and dementia. 
One in three seniors now dies with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Not dies from it, but dies with it. But many are dying from Alzheimer's now. It's, gone, it's going absolutely off the charts. Autism, 10,000% increase in the last 50 years. One in 50 children now dies again, or, or excuse me, now has autism. So that's a, the, the kind of increases we're seeing are absolutely cataclysmic. Prevalence of Alzheimer's disease, that graph's not hard to figure out. It's going through the roof. It can't not go through the roof. There's a direct cause and effect happening here, and we are not speculating about these materials being in the air. We've done 60 plus lab tests in Shasta County alone, the material's there. It's inarguable. Unprecedented ozone hole opens up over the Canadian Arctic, the kind of headline we don't see, you have to dig for this. Canadian government threatens publicly to fire their scientists if they talk to the media about this ozone hole. How many of you can feel how hot the sun is? It's not your imagination. We started measuring UV because we knew the geoengineering destroys the ozone 